What's up, you two? Welcome back to Everything Engineering. Uh, today we are doing an example of a 1D stiffness matrix. Uh, my last video I derived the stiffness matrix for a 2x2 two two system, and today we're going to apply that stiffness matrix and solve a one dimensional problem. So, what we're looking at, we've got two elements, both on fixed supports, and we've got three nodes. And what we want to do is we want to find the displacement at each of the nodes and the reaction forces at the end. So, all right, so first of all, what we want to do, we want to just draw our free body diagram of our springs. So with this type of example, even though we have only two Ks, K1 and K2, we still are going to have four different nodes. So we got one node, two node, our third node, and our fourth node. Because we have an applied force of 20 kilonewtons at node number two. So that's going to that's gonna create some discontinuity in our element. So we need to draw a node there. And we're still going to label it as K1 and K1 and K2. And then at three, we have a change in cross section. So you see you can see K1 equals 100, K2 equals 200, that's AE over L. So at node 3 we have a change in our stiffness, so therefore we're going to put a node there. And then at node number 4 that is a fixed support, so that's going to be another node. So now we understand the picture, we understand our free body diagram, now let's do some labeling. Now we know that there's going to be some type of F one at the first node that's going to act as a reaction force. Similarly, F4, there's going to be some type of reaction force at the fixed support. Okay, since we're dealing with all the external forces, like the reaction forces, F1 due to the fixed end support, and F4 due to the fixed end support, we know that we have an external force of 20 kilonewtons. So let's make that red. We know that our node 2, we've got a 20 kilonewton force, and then at node 3, equals 0, because we're going to have no external force acting on node 3. So if we recall the stiffness matrix, nothing more than one negative one negative one and one and always remember that they have to be symmetric it has to be a symmetric matrix and a square matrix okay so now as we developed before we have our equation f1 and f2 acting on the first node with our k1 our u1 and u2 now let's label our u's here u1 put it in the right direction, U2, U3, and U4. So we know that U1 and U4 are actually going to be equal to zero because we're not allowing any movement in the X directions because we're at a fixed support. So this equation in matrix form something like this. Okay, so here's our matrix form for node or for element 1. Now let's label this. 1, 2, 3. So we have three elements. So we're going to need three stiffness matrices. And right here, we've started developing our first stiffness matrix. Now let's start plugging in some values that we know. F1 Okay, we're going to have a value, an unknown value, F2, we have our 20 kilonewtons. K1 was 100. U1 was 0 due to the fixed support, and U2 is an unknown. Alright, so this is our first matrix. Remember, here's our column one, column two, row 
row one, row two. So I like to label my rows and my columns after creating a stiffness matrix, and you'll see why later on. Now, so let's move on to spring two. So as we saw before, remember now we have our node two, to our node three. We're at still at K1, right? So K1 minus K1 minus K1 and K1. And now we're at node two to three, so we have F2 and we have our F3. Similarly, we're gonna have U2 and U3. So now we're gonna start plugging in values. F2, we said was 20 kilonewtons. F3, we said was zero, because there's nothing acting on F3. So we just put zero in there. And then K1 is the same 100 kilonewtons, kilonewtons uh, per meter. And U2, unknown, and U3 is unknown. So now we got two equations and two unknowns here. And here's our column two, column three, row two, and row three. So now let's look at spring three, or element three, or whatever you want to call it. That connects three and four. Now remember, we're looking at K2 now, because remember back at our original picture, at node number three, we've got a change in either area or length. And uh, we got then a stiffness of 200 compared to our K1 at 100. So now that's why we needed to create a node. So, and from three to four, so we're looking at F3, and F4. And now it's going to be K2 minus K2 minus K2 and K2, U3 and U4. Alright, so let's plug in some values. Now we remember from above F3 is 0, F4 is a fixed support, so it's unknown. K2, 200, negative. U3, unknown. And U4, big fat zero, because it's a fixed support. Okay, so now let's label. There, so that is our third column, fourth column, third row, fourth row. So now we need to find out our stiffness matrix, the big stiff stiffness matrix for the overall for the overall element from node one all the way to node number four. So we know that we have four nodes, right? So that equals four degrees of freedom. Therefore, we're going to have a 4 by 4 stiffness matrix. Remember, I reminded that that we needed to have a symmetric 4 by 4 square matrix, right? So being symmetric, there's a trick that we need to do when adding our different uh, matrices for our different elements. So putting this into big matrix form, we have our first F1, two, three, four. This is gonna be our first column, our second column, third column, fourth column. And we got our first row, second row, third row, and our fourth row, okay? So now comes the reason why I was marking our rows in our columns in green here in another color. So now we want to fill these into a four by four matrix because it has to be square and it has to be symmetric. And we need to do a multiplication. If you remember matrix multiplication, we're going to have to times by our displacement, right? Because remember that F equals K times X due to Hooke's law. So our force vector times our K matrix times our displacement vector, which in this case is going to be U. And that's going to be four by one of U1, U2, U3, U4. So matrix multiplication only works if these two numbers are equal. And then we get a four by one matrix. Okay, so that is why we have to have a four by four matrix, and now we need to fill in the blanks. 
So if we look at our first slot here, this is our first column and our first row. So if we look back at our matrix that we, that we formed, the three matrices that we formed, we need to find our first column, right, and our first row. So that number is 100. So we plug in 100. Similarly here, go to our matrix with our second with our second column and our first row, it's just connect the dots. We basically just fill in the blanks, right? It's easy. Second column, first row, negative 100. Okay, so now we need to move to the third column, first row. Find out where we have a third column, any threes. Okay, three, but, oh, this is the second row, so we can't use that one. Look down here, there's another three. Oh, but third row, can't use that one, so there's nothing that corresponds to that slot there, so it's gonna be zero. This is easy. Now number four, four and, so look for our fourth column, first row. We have a four and a three, and that's it. So that's going to be another zero. Easy. Now we need to go to the next row. First row, second, sorry, first column, second row. Where's our ones at? Right here. So we look and see, we have our first row and our second, our first column, our second row, and it's going to be 100. So fill in the rest of the blanks like that. Actually, we'll do one more. 100 plus 100. So this one, we have two, our second column and our second row. We've got one right here, but we've also got one right here, right? Our second column with our second row. So what we do in this situation, you just add them, simple. All right, so fill in the rest of the matrix and you should get something like this. There, so this is what the matrix should look like when you are all done. And that's good, it's, it's a, a square matrix, four by four times four by one, then we get what we want, that is totally fine, great. Let's fill in our values for our force and our displacement. Remember F1 will be something because it's at a fixed support that is unknown. And F4, same thing, fixed support unknown. F2 was 20, F3 is zero because nothing's happening to F3 or to, at node three. And there's our stiffness matrix again. Now, U1, zero, fixed support. U4, zero, fixed support. U2, U3, unknown, okay.